Listen to me. If there was a wise man who would ever think of this, they would say in order to be superior to the man, you've got to be the man. For I am the man himself. What is going on and how are y'all doing this Saturday night? Well, early Saturday evening. This is the Club of the Man 1993. I'll be recording stuff tonight. Try to get it uploaded tomorrow. But of course, there's 41 minutes until AEW Collision. I will be watching that tonight. And I will do a review on this episode, on this, on this, on that episode as well. Um, but again, I don't want to commit to watching Collision all the time. Because I just don't have. But anyways, I will talk about that at some other point. We will also talk about CM Punk in that show briefly in this review because he did have an appearance on this episode with a hype promo. And I do look forward to seeing, hearing what Mr. Philip Brooks has to say tonight on Collision. But we're going to talk first about, um, about um, Dynamite first. I'll tr maybe try to make sure to change the logo below from AEW just to AEW, an AEW Dynamite logo. We'll see because there could be some occasional collision reviews. We'll see though. But this is the uh, June 14th edition of AEW Dynamite. It took place in Washington, D.C. Known for being the place of the first ever episode of AEW Dynamite. Going into this um, show, it had a pretty stacked card. Got a few more matches established for Forbidden Door. Like I've said recently, yes, again, I don't know most of these guys. But some of these guys I do know. And some of these matches teased, I'm like, whoo, something I'm interested in. Like, I am definitely interested in Kenny Omega and Will Ospreay for the IWGP United States Championship. I'm definitely interested in um, uh, Brian Danielson and Kazushka Okada. I don't know Okada that well, but I know this is a dream match for Brian. And because I know this is a dream match for Brian, I know it's going to be big. And I know ok Okada's big. I just haven't seen much of his stuff. But that's going to be big. Um, they teased the possible Fatal 4-Way for the International Championship. I kind of want it to be one-on-one. -on -one. But of course, who they're teasing it with, like it could be good. But I kind of want to be well, well with one certain person. I'm still hoping that we get a chance to possibly get CM Punk versus Kenta. Of course, with the whole fallout from the media scrum, we got more details thanks to an, an interview from CM Punk that was released in an article form yesterday, which again, I will talk about it in my collision review. I don't know if that will happen, but it'd be nice to see that match happen. CM Punk versus Kenta. And um, it was announced we are going to get MJF and um, Hiroshi Tanahashi for the world title. Okay. Um, is that it? I feel like they may have announced one or two more. I can't remember. But like, there's some teases. Oh, again, oh, oh, match. I hope we get one-on-one -on -one for the international title. But we'll talk about that when we get to it. But let's roll in and talk about the show. As, yeah, I want to be able to be ready for when Collision goes live. But anyways, we're going to start off the show. We open up with an episode of, um, with the AEW Eliminator match. MJF versus Adam Cole. Bay Bay. Now, as I said last week, the problem I have with this match is, again, the fact that it's the champ, is the, the world champion in a non-title match. And those bother me because how many times have we seen, like, like, especially anywhere in wrestling, it's been used to basically elevate a talent so that they can fight for the world title. Well, 
why do the match, like a match like MJF and Adam Cole, non-title, when he could just save it for a pay-per-view? And I'm guessing this will probably take place at Wembley Stadium, unless they wanted to save it till All Out, since they're doing both. And give someone, I, I don't know, I don't know who they're going to give MJF uh, the fight at Wembley Stadium. I don't know. But it's most likely it's going to be Adam Cole. Unless they have something else up their sleeve. But if you subtract that out of there, again, awesome match. MJF as world champion continues to be just great. And he's putting on like clinic after clinic after clinic. Whether it is the Fatal 4-Way. Whether it is the Iron Man match. Whether it feels against Kanosuke Takeshka. He's putting on clinics. And again, I like how he did... Again, I love... What, what's unique about the character of MJF. Is that he can either wrestle a simple match with nothing crazy. Or he's... There's a match where he can do a moonsault. Or in this match, he does like an elbow drop. Like from, from the top rope through the announce table. Like he's one of those guys where it's like... Yeah, I could do this if I really wanted to, but I don't feel like it. Being just a typical A-level heel. And so great back and forth, great chemistry between the two of them. And of course, it did what I felt that of course it should do to protect both. It ended in a draw. As it looked like Adam Cole was just about to win when he hit a Panama Sunrise off the ropes, and I think it was one, two, and then the bell rang before, right, maybe like a half a second before you could get the three. Which, of course, is a bummer on Adam Cole's part, but it gets excuse for the feud to continue. And I still hope to God, I still hope to God, we see that promo war with MJF and Britt Baker. Oh, God, I cannot. Again, if Adam Cole roast them pretty good. I would just love to see because Britt had her share of promo wars in herself. Like the one always stand out to me is the one she had with Ruby Soho when Ruby was number one contender when she first came into AEW for the uh, first Arthur Ashe Stadium um, Dynamite. I think her and MJ have been put on a fabulous promo. Of course, after the match though, Adam Cole demanded five more minutes. And MJF's like, nah, and he leaves. Uh, we didn't get the hype reel for CM Punk's return to Collision. Also, we got um, a breakdown of the card. The card looks pretty stacked indeed. The main event, of course, tonight will be CM Punk and FTR taking on Samoa Joe and the Golden Elites, Juice Robinson and Switchblade, Jay White. Um... Now we have um, Sammy Guevara being interviewed in the ring with, with, with Renee Paquette. Sammy says it's been a hell of a ride the last couple months from the high uh, of the announcing of his wife's pregnancy and the low of lows by failing to become world champion. But the goal has always been the same. And now his wife will be by his side, baby in one arm and the world title in the other. Uh, also, uh, he revealed also that they're going to have a girl. And apparently, based off of the Instagram pictures, they're going to name it Luna. Luna Guevara. Interesting. Um, but before that happens, though, he has to make some tough decisions and make some changes in AEW. Which brings out a longtime rival of his, Darby Allen. Darby congratulated um, Sammy on, you know, the soon-to-be baby. And says he knows he got beat and he doesn't want a title match. He'll start from the bottom. But if you listen to people, it sounds like they're starting to like Sammy again. Which is true. But are you going to stand on your own two feet? Or live in the shadow of the JAS? He mentions that him and Sting get along well because they're equals. And Sammy doesn't have to answer right now. But he thinks he knows the answer. Whether he's going to stand on his own two feet or if he's going to live in the shadow of Chris Jericho. Then out comes the mentor of Sammy Guevara, Chris Jericho. 
tells Darby to mind your own business and has Floyd in his hand. Confronts Sammy and says it's just the two of them. He's been mean to ask a question. These months he was chasing MJF for the world title. He never called Chris once for help. The guy who's his mentor and the guy who brought him into AEW and made him a star. And then Sammy's like, you know, that's funny. Because if Chris would have called him, he wouldn't have lost to Adam Cole. Twice. Jericho is like, you must be suffering delusions of grandeur. He gives him a chance to apologize, but Sammy isn't apologizing. Jericho wants them to have a tag match and be lay sex gods again next week to remind him how it is. And then Darby scoffs and says, Chris may call himself the wizard, but when he steps in the ring, the magic is gone. And Jericho calls Darby a mutant, and maybe he and Sammy should just beat the hell out of him two on one. But Darby, not Darby, Darby's like, well, you know, I'm not here alone, and out came Sting. And then Jericho pulled out Floyd, and then basically Jericho and Sting got into like a little bit of like a sword fight with the baseball bats. And um, sends them away. So we are getting a tag match next week with Darby Allen and Sting versus Chris Jericho and Sam Guevara, Les Sex Gods. So we'll see where that goes. So it looks like they're teasing a summer feud between Chris Jericho and Darby Allen. I'm not, no, no, I'm sorry. Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara. About time we kind of got that, we got that feud. And it's good again to see Sammy being accepted again. I think. Once they cooled off on the PDA from him and Ty, which, again, that comes from the fact that, you know, you have Sammy making out with his hot blonde wife that I'm sure a lot of guys want. I, though, have a fabulous woman in my life who's about to become my wife in two weeks from today. Um, so I don't have to worry about that. But you get the point where I'm saying it. I think if you get Sammy away from this, people love him. And this whole storyline with him being a baby being a baby, being a father in real life is definitely giving him that momentum. And it's about time that we do do a teacher versus student uh, match. The only thing is, though, I will say, though, is that Jericho's losing a lot more lately. And that worries me, because I feel like that if Jericho continues to lose, then again, he's going to lose his prestige. Like, beating him won't feel like such a big deal anymore. Like, his matches with Adam Cole, they were okay. They just, it, again, it just might have been a thing where Adam Cole and Chris Jericho just didn't have the best chemistry. I, I just didn't think they, I mean, the storytelling, the builds of the matches were great. I, again, just feel like that they it just, they didn't knock it out of the park like I thought they should have. So I don't know. Maybe Jericho might need to get a win over Sammy. Or, you know, a few more wins against somebody else before getting to Sammy. To be able to, you know, get a little bit of momentum back. But just my opinion. But we'll see. Also, though, apparently this is the first time that Jericho and Sting have ever wrestled. I did not know that until I heard that the other day. That, that they've never wrestled before. Not even WCW. Interesting. Um, we also have the IWGP World Champion uh, Sonata. Didn't know he existed until the show. Uh, he's issued an open challenge for Forbidden Door. And of course I will share later on who accepted that. Uh, then we had this pretty good eight-man tag team match. The Mobile Embassies. Swerve Strickland. Uh, Brian Cage. Bishop Khan. And uh, Toa Leona. Only one I know is Swerve and Cage. They took on the team of Darby Allen Sting, the AEW International Champion Orange Cassidy, and Limitless Keith Lee, who shaved. And I think with the sh with the clean shaved face. The gray hair doesn't bother me as much. I've said many times, not a fan of the gray hair look. Because it makes Keith look really old. But again, it's a look he wants. So I respect that. Uh, again, I'm not, I'm not a fan of, of the look. But it's what he wants. I respect it. But um, it still feels like they're kind of holding him back a little. 
Like, I think that's a problem. Like, when they don't want Keith Lee to, you know, steal too much of the spotlight yet, they handcuff him, but you, especially now, it's like that I know Keith better than when he first came into NXT. Now it's like, I kind of want to see them get out of the first gear with him. And also, when are they going to finally do this match with Swerve? But this eight-man tag, though, is still really, really good. Keith, though, did do kind of do like a um, like a monkey flip or like, you know, like try to try to do a kip up and he didn't quite get his balance on it, but it's okay. But um, eventually, though, the faces win with a Scorpion death drop from Sting onto Brian Cage for the victory. Um, we have Renee Paquette and the the guns or the ass boys um, being asked, of course, why they're aligning themselves with the Golden Elite. And they said, like, we don't know about any alliance with Jay White. And they talk of how they're the best brother tag team in AEW. And they challenge the Hardy Boys to a match next week. So Hardy Boys versus the Gun Club. And I guess they're trying to avoid the question of why they screwed Ricky Starks. Who we may see on Collision tonight, we'll see. Um, Wardlow took on Jake Hager for the TNT title. A decent match, and well, of course, um, later in the show, we did see Arn Anderson get beaten down um, by Wardlow, I mean, not by Wardlow, by uh, Christian Cage and Luchasaurus, set up for the match with Wardlow and Luchasaurus tonight. Kind of wanted to see them wait till pay-per-view for that, but it's fine. Uh, but Hager and Wardlow always seem to have decent chemistry together. They have decent hoss fights. Wardlow, though, does retain, and again, that's where we see... Uh, Christian Cage and Luchasaurus had beaten down on Arn Anderson and Wardlow went running to save him. Uh, we then, of course, had um, Tanahashi then challenging MJF for an AEW title match at Forbidden Door. Ray Paquette then goes to interview MJF about it and he's like, huh? He goes, no. I, 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 this, this is the first time also that I no-showed a match. And so sorry, fart noise, no can do, bud. But of course, he said he no showed I, I, I could read, I, 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 something important. Basically, referred to when he no showed his uh, his meet and greet last year, double or nothing weekend. But you know, oh, then we had another interview. Here's where a match got teased. So Renee Paquette interviews Orange Cassidy, and he says, right about now, somebody will walk in and challenge him for the international title, and who walks in? Nobody else other than Zack Sabre Jr. Ooh. Again, we were supposed to get Zack Sabre Jr. and Brian Danielson last year. We didn't because Brian got hurt. But I still love to see that match. But Zack Sabre Jr. and Orange Cassidy. I digging that one. But then, um, I guess Sabre's, I forgot what champion he's in in, in New Japan. He said he would love to be a double champ, but then Daniel Garcia rolled in of asking um, after Katsuyori Shibata and Orange Cassidy then sets up a tag match with Zack Sabre Jr. and Daniel Garcia versus um, himself and Katsuyori Shibata next week on Dynamite. Cool. That might mean the match at Forbidden Door will be a fatal four way, which we haven't had. I don't think we really had any fatal four ways that about announced yet, but. Damn, would I rather see just Orange Cassidy versus Zack Sabre Jr. Again, I I, I know Zack Sabre Jr. because of his time in the Cruiserweight uh, Classic. I, I I was a big fan of him there. I would definitely love to see him go one-on-one with Orange Cassidy. Again, Orange had a, I thought, the match of the night at Forbidden Door last year with, um, he took on Will Ospreay. Still might be, my, I think I still consider that one my match of the year for last year. But um, that'd be a hell of a one-on-one match. Again, I, the, the Fatal 4 ways fine. But damn, I want to see that 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 um, that um one-on-one match. That'd be great. Tony Storm took on Sky Blue, who won the uh, Fatal 4-Way back on Rampage last, last Friday. Um, throughout the match, they, were, they had Sky Blue's mom. And I guess they were kind of using that to try to get some more heat on Tony Storm. Um... I think there was a time where Tony actually did try to spray the green spray, which I'm being told the whole idea of the green spray and spraying the L's is supposed to be like a um, 
a ripoff of the NWO, which, okay, but I'm just still not a fan of it. It just does not fit the outcasts. But they use that to try to get more heat on Tony Storm. Um, uh, I believe Ruby Soho was also out there. Soraya was there for some reason. I don't know why. But she was hold the, the, They had a Ruby holding up a, a Soraya, Soraya on a stick with the loser sign or whatnot. Um, but um, uh, Ruby Soho tried to get involved a few times. And then Sky Blue also actually kicked out of a Storm Zero. But then Tony then reversed it into a Cloverleaf submission. And got in pretty deep and got Sky Blue to tap out. So a nice show by Sky Blue, who's definitely like an up-and-coming star. Like, this match made me think of the, um, I think the debuting episode of Rampage, I think it was, when Britt Baker took on Red Velvet. That's what this match kind of made me think of. Like, like an upcoming star uh, getting, like, a, like, a brief chance in, in, for a world title. Cool. Um, afterwards, uh, the Outcasts tried to... Take out Sky Blue again until Will Nightingale made the save. Kind of repetition there, but you know, whatever. Um, Renee Paquette interviews Jungle Hook, which also rumors are saying that apparently WWE wants Hook. Don't do it. Hook. Because Vince McMahon is lurking around. And apparently they put a um, new corporate photo of him on their corporate website. Ew. I'm sure it looked absolutely, positively disgusting. Well, actually, I didn't see it, so it was, in fact, disgusting. But anyways, the beginning interview back saved by Renee Paquette. And Jungle Boy says they're amped up, and he's feeling a little naked without gold on his shoulder. And he's accepting Sonata's open challenge. So he'll take on Sonata for the IWGP World Championship at Forbidden Door next Sunday. Um... Jungle Boy then cuts Hook off and says he's not just his tag partner, but his best friend. And it would mean the world if he had his back at Forbidden Door. And Hook fist bumped him. And again, there's been people saying they think this is leading to Jungle Boy turning heel. Could, we'll see. Also, was it during this promo where they kind of, I think the, people are talking about how they're, they're flashing this no up on the screen. And it's the second time in a few months it's happened. So don't know what that's teasing, but we'll see, of course, down the line. I don't think it ever outdo the build to the what rabbit thing. But, you know, that's long gone and Bray Wyatt's nowhere to be seen in WWE, so that's just sad. Um, Brian Danielson made his way to commentary for the main event. We get a hype reel for Forbidden Door. And the Bullet Club Gold and FTR cut a promo to hype up the main event for Collision. And then we have our main event, which was another car crashing match between the Blackpool Combat Clubs. John Moxley, Claudio Castadoli, and Lulia. They took on the, they call themselves the Hung Bucks. Hangman Adam Page and the Young Bucks, Matt and Nick Jackson. Uh, again, excellent match. Fast pace, high flying and whatnot. Hung Bucks win with the Buckshot Lariat from Hangman Adam Page on Wheeler Yuta. But after the match, the BCC start a beatdown. And then it just got mad because we see the AEW return of Eddie Kingston. Now, Eddie comes out and he's beaten down on Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Yuta, who we all know that he's not been a fan of Claudio Castagnoli. And then once, though, John Moxley comes in, they continue the history here where it's like Moxley and Eddie are really good friends. And then Mox is like, what are you doing? And they start to fall out a little, but didn't completely turn on each other. Um, and then Matt Jackson then attacks um, John Moxley in the process. And then Eddie pulls the Jacksons off of Mox and shoves everybody and then Kanosuke Takeshka comes running in and attacks Kingston to make the save. Then Kenny Omega comes out and him and Kanosuke trade forearms. And then eventually they take out um, Kanosuke with a V-trigger and a superkick party and a dragon suplex. The back will come back, come back in but get taken out with superkicks. Another V-trigger... And then out of nowhere, Will Ospreay just flies from the sky 
and takes Kenny down with a kick and then the hidden blade finisher. And Osprey stands tall while Brian just applauds with commentary. So chaos is ensuring. So Eddie, so Kenny is back. Apparently, though, again, he was in Japan, probably recruiting people. Again, he could have been doing something because then there's been a lot of heavy rumors about Kota Ibushi coming into AEW. That could be a tease that Kota could be on his way. But, of course, we'll have to wait and see. But, crazy show of Dynamite. I gave the episode an A-. Very strong card. Again, a couple little nitpicks in there, but it still delivered very strong. I loved it. I gave it an A-. And like I said, we I will be doing a review of the first ever episode of AEW Collision, which comes on in 16 minutes. Good timing here. Um, again, I'm not going to be reviewing, reviewing or watching Collision all the time. But again, we'll see what happens. Um, and again, I'll probably change the logo on this to an AEW Dynamite logo if there is one. Because I'm pretty sure I would want to use an AEW Collision one if I ever do any more Collision reviews. So, we'll have to wait and see. But guys... That is my review. What are your guys' thoughts on this episode of um, of AEW Dynamite? Got used to that because I always say AEW Collision. And again, we will talk about more about CM Punk in the Collision review as well. But again, I will do a SmackDown review. I'm trying my best to get the last three shorts done for my uh, worst matches. Again, hopefully that is coming soon. And again, hopefully again in two weeks once the wedding's done, a lot more things will be able to get done on this channel as well too. So we will see. So guys, once again, what are your thoughts on this episode of Dynamite? I gave them an A minus. Leave your guys, guys thoughts down in the comment section below. And be sure as always to slap a like on the video and subscribe for more content on my channel. And follow me on Twitter at the Club of the Man 93. Also follow me on TikTok and Instagram at the Club of the Man 1993. And until then, guys, I check it out. I'll catch you guys all later. And do not forget, in order to be superior to the man. You gotta be the man. And for I am the man himself.